Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. Half, more than half, of U.S. banks are potentially insolvent. These are not my words. I am not making this up. Let me go directly to this. Yeah, let me get to that page. Okay. A Hoover Institution report by Professor Saru and a group of banking experts calculates that more than 2,315 U.S. banks out of 4,300, so that's at least 55 to 60 percent, of U.S. banks are currently sitting on assets worth less than their liabilities. The market value of their loan portfolios is $2 trillion lower than the stated book value. How does this happen? I'll get to that. These lenders include Big Beasts. One of the 10 most vulnerable banks is a globally systemic entity with assets of over $1 trillion. Three others are large banks. It is not just a problem for banks under $250 billion that didn't have to pass stress tests, he said. The U.S. Treasury and Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, thought they had stemmed the crisis by bailing out uninsured depositors of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank with a systemic risk exemption after those lenders uh, collapsed in March. So, uh, this is... You know, I meant to read this as well, but uh, the twin crashes in U.S. commercial real estate and the U.S. bond market have collided with $9 trillion in uninsured deposits in the American banking systems. Such deposits can vanish in an afternoon in the cyber age. Let me bring up something else. PacWest. Uh, so, if there is a U.S. banking crisis, what troubles at Pacific Western Silicon Valley banks really mean? This, uh, this one is from uh, May 4th. All right. Shares of San Francisco-based PacWest Bank Corp plunged this week after investors learned the regional bank was considering a sale. The bank has said it had not experienced a high number of customer withdrawals, but the news still stoked fears of a potential surge in withdrawals among regional banks. While the company's stock price soared 85.2% Friday, its shares were still down 42.2% for the week. Another regional bank, Western Alliance Bank Corp., gained 44.8% Friday, but its loss for the week was 29%. So these banks are at risk of failing not because of the actual business of the bank, whether they are solvent with what they owe, but because of their stock price. As the Federal Reserve tightened monetary policy and raised interest rates to fight inflation, the value of long-term assets such as mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasury bonds held by banks, plummeted. Actually, no. The value of those assets did not plummet. The value of those assets remained constant. But most bonds pay a fixed interest rate that becomes attractive when interest rates fall, driving up demand and the price of the bond. On the other hand, if interest rates rise, investors will no longer prefer the lower fixed interest rate paid by a bond, thus driving down its price. So, they are upset that they are not getting <laughs> more money for the bonds and assets. Hmm. Okay. Now, let me go to another page here. <laughs> All right. This is something I wrote this morning that uh, hopefully helps you understand some of this. 
Capitalist banks issue risking loans to capitalist enterprises in amounts exceeding the bank's assets. Leverage debt, meaning they may have $10 billion in deposits, but they will loan out $200 billion. All right, so they issue risking loans. The privately owned Federal Reserve creates new currency from thin air to fund the loans. The bank which issued the loan now considers the loan to be an asset at this point because the borrower will have to pay the, and the capital and the interest to the bank to pay off the loan. Then the risky borrower defaults on the loan. The bank, with many of these or an exceptionally large uh, failure, the bank winds up in failure. Another capitalist bank picks up the remaining assets. The FDIC picks up the debt. The capitalist Fed issues a loan to the government to fund that government debt using money created out of thin air by the Fed. This takes the form of U.S. Treasury bonds. This is a promissory note from the federal government that they will pay the Fed for this. The Fed then sells the debt, the Treasury bonds, <laughs> to private capitalist banks while taxpayers are left on the hook to pay for the debt. You pay the government, the government pays the Fed. The Fed charges interest to the government for the loan. Meanwhile, the government issues a guarantee to the bank which assumed the assets. In the case of First Republic, that guarantee is $50 billion to J.P. Morgan. Any loan which J.P. Morgan assumed from First Republic and calling it an asset, any loan which defaults will be paid for by the government and the cycle continues. The um, Alliance of Small and Medium-Sized uh, Regional Banks are asking the U.S. government to guarantee all deposits that I uh, of any size for the next five to seven years. There are several things to also keep in mind about all of this. As this continues, banks have tightened their uh, credit requirements, so they are issuing more, uh, they are issuing fewer loans, approving less credit, which causes more uh, the economy to slow down. As each one of these banks closes, they also lay off th thousands, possibly tens of thousands of workers that have no place else to go at this point. Even if the bank that is assuming the assets of the failed bank, like J.P. Morgan assumes the physical locations from uh, First Republic uh, and their user interface, etc. Uh, they are still laying off lots of people because they're not going to keep the management, middle management in place. They're going to come in, they're going to uh, install their own software their own systems, their own people. Uh, so you've still got thousands uh, of workers that are being laid off because of these bank failures. This is a domino effect which is clearly seen, and we've, we've seen it in the past. Uh, maybe not, well, some of that, a lot of that happened in 2008, 
but mostly you look at what happened in 1929, starting in 1929. The Great Depression was not something that happened overnight. The initial event which caused it be, happened in 1929, but the truth is that it was a gradual process which occurred with bank after bank failing uh, over about three years. So we have not seen the end of this by, any, by a long shot. More and more people are getting nervous. Polls have shown that around half, maybe more than half of Americans do not believe that the U.S. banking system is stable at this time. But maybe you do. Tell me, why, tell me in the comments what your thoughts on this matter are. We are going to continue seeing more and more smaller banks failing and the larger banks getting larger and larger. And yet, even they are not that stable, as has been shown. Another danger here is that the, the FDIC only has assets, I think, of $425 billion. And yet, the 2,315 banks uh, that are mentioned in that article, in that study, have, you know, debts of over $2 trillion above and beyond their assets. So this is a very big problem. Anyway, uh, we are definitely heading into a depression, not a recession, a depression. We've been in a recession for a long time, and it's going to continue to get worse. We definitely have to help each other along any way that we can, donate to food banks, homeless shelters, etc., if and when you can. Support your family, support your friends, Pay attention to what's going on with them because they may be already suffering from all of this. All right? And if they're not now, it may happen in the very near future. Keep, keep building and, and offering help wherever you can. All right, so share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can afford it, please donate whatever you can to help expand this channel and my presidential campaign. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.